It is the proverbial calm before the storm. Looking at infrared satellite imagery for this afternoon, let's take a look at the weather across the U.S. Looks like a lot of high pressure. Big Ridge extending down from the northeastern U.S. into the lower Mississippi River Valley. But I'm going to draw your attention to the top of the image way up here in Canada. Southern Alberta. Got a little bit of a stormy sky in that region. Some definite upper level lift around Lethbridge. What you're seeing there is the beginnings of the nor'easter that will be affecting the northeast U.S. this weekend. This is a look at the Q vector divergence. The actual convergent areas right here indicating lift, upper level lift, through the mid-troposphere. And we've got this couplet here representing a short wave working through the flow. So that's where we're at right now. That's associated with that cloud material there in Alberta. And if we run this forward, you can see it moving into the central Rockies tomorrow. And then across Texas and the eastern U.S. by Friday. Then going into Saturday, look at that. It really picks up amplitude and intensifies, and then we have a full-blown bear clinic system off the northeastern U.S. And that's what we're looking at for this weekend. And we'll just cut to the chase. There's the GFS. The surface panel showing a weak reflection of that wave moving through the Rockies over the next 36 hours or so. A little bit of snow shower activity in New Mexico. And then that emerges down in the lower Rio Grande on Friday. And then that disturbance traverses the Gulf Coast region, emerges out into the Atlantic, and there's our system coming together. 10.05 millibars Friday evening, rapidly intensifying down to 9.59 millibars by Saturday evening. And we need 24 millibars in 24 hours to qualify as a meteorological bomb and that's definitely it for sure that looks like about 40 millibars in 24 hours and that has fallen more in line with the european model that we saw a couple days ago and the european model has had some changes of its own if we bring that forward there it is coming together off the north carolina coast and it looks like it goes through a occlusion there's the old occluded low in the new bear clinic system there that process it looks like it's taken away from the system so we're not seeing the strong pressure falls off the northeast coast that we see with the gfs so that's one aspect that's going to have to be resolved but eventually we do get the falling pressures down to 970 millibars off maine by sunday morning so there's a few details that still need to be resolved. And then there's the UK MET model. I don't really like using these models as tiebreakers, but it is enlightening to see what they show. And we see that this is more in line with the European model. We don't have that dual vortex structure that we had on the European model, but the pressures are more in line with that and not really going with that strong bomb development as much. So we'll see where we're at for tomorrow. In terms of precipitation, it appears to be very comparable between the two models. A narrow band of maybe sleet just off the coast of Atlantic City. But most of this appears to be coming down as snow. Heavy snow from Connecticut up to Rhode Island and Boston. And then the GFS model. Even though the pressure field elements are a little bit different, the precipitation field is pretty similar. Snow corridor from northern North Carolina right up into Connecticut and Massachusetts. And eventually, yeah, Maine will get some of that as well. As far as the total snowfall from the GFS, there's the chart we have as of the Wednesday model run, but 
I don't feel it's prudent to look too much at snowfall amounts because we're still about 72 hours out and the models are really not capable of resolving some of those mesoscale interactions that result in locally heavy snow. We can use this as a baseline amount. We can see maybe 15 to 20 inches around Cape Cod and then decreasing as you go west. And the coverage with the European model that was a little bit more extensive as you go west. Putting three inch amounts all the way from Poughkeepsie up into the mountains of New Hampshire. There's the surface chart for Wednesday afternoon. We've got that big ridge extending down the Appalachians, giving us a rather cool day in places like Indianapolis, Pittsburgh, and Birmingham. Further out to the west, we've got upslope flow setting up in West Texas with some warm air advection coming up from the Gulf. And that's helping to produce some snow in West Texas down the Caprock all the way to Lubbock. This will help interact with that upper level system moving down from Alberta. And eventually that interaction with that thermal contrast, you can see the contrast between 50s there in El Paso and 20s and 30s in Oklahoma that will come together and that will result in some of the first tangible evidence that we'll see on the surface chart for Friday of that impending nor'easter. So that'll be something to watch over the next 36 hours. In the western U.S., under the influence of this plateau high, kind of a stagnant weather pattern, and we've still got haze and fog in place in some of the interior valleys. And then up to the north, a new Alberta Clipper, a little bit too far east for an Alberta Clipper, but it is a outbreak of cold air coming down from the northern latitudes, sub-zero temperatures all the way down to Flin Flon, and not quite all the way to Saskatoon, so the western periphery looking a little bit warm. Looking out in the Pacific, let's take a look at that. It has quieted down a little bit from a couple weeks ago, but we've got this system here out in the Gulf of Alaska, some snow up there near Kodiak, and as you go further north, Alaska, the interior regions, looking pretty cold, minus 20s and minus teens. And as you go further out to the east into Canada, we've got almost minus 40 in northern Victoria Island. So there is quite a bit of cold air in place up north. And then a quick look through the rest of Canada. There's that occlusion in the Hudson Bay region and not much going on in the Atlantic region. An old occlusion in the Labrador Sea and very cold temperatures there in Quebec and Labrador. So let's go ahead and put that forecast together. And what I'd like you to do is keep an eye on these red and blue lines. Those are thickness lines, and a lot of the channels that you might see that are dealing with this nor'easter, they don't really look at the thermal issues, and that's really the key to what's happening. And what you're going to see, look at that pinched appearance right there in West Texas, the thickness lines coming closer together, indicating a very strong thermal gradient. And that's where really what's key. There's another strong thermal gradient, and that short wave that's moving down from Alberta, it's going to tend to follow those strong thermal gradients, link right up with them, and produce pressure falls at the surface and cyclogenesis. And that's where things really start happening. So let's go forward through this sequence. You're going to see some upper-level lift right there over northern Colorado early tomorrow. That thermal gradient right down to the south still holding on. That upslope flow helping to drive it to the west. And with that upslope flow, you get adiabatic cooling. And that helps kind of dynamically reinforce some of that troughing right there. That thermal troughing there in New Mexico. So by the time we get up to Friday morning, we've got a really good gradient coming together right there. Big Ben kind of unsettled. You can see some snow breaking out, some precip, and that's really where the system is starting to form. Moves rapidly down to the south. We get that 
cold air advection in its wake right there, warm air advection on the other side, that's that cyclogenesis, moving out into the Gulf of Mexico. And we also see some development out there in the Atlantic as that large upper air system moves to the east. And that's it coming together, and you all know the rest. So, why don't we see what else is going to happen? Um, certainly, we could go on and on about that nor'easter, but I think those are the relevant details that we're most interested in right now. A lot of this will become more clear by Friday, and we'll cover that when we get to Friday's webcast. Elsewhere around the country, that's a week outbreak of some cold air, weak Alberta clippers, some cold air invection in the wake. That's on the thermal gradient, but it doesn't really develop very much. A little bit of cyclogenesis there. And there's another one up to the north. Yep, that's going to drive southward into the Great Plains by midweek next week. And that could be another winter weather system that we'll be contending with. So that's the thermal structure, the fronts, and the general setup. And that could get quite interesting. And we're expecting some record cold temperatures in Florida. There's not a whole lot of cold air coming south, but it's moving south very rapidly. And that's what's happening there in Florida. They're getting some unusually cold air, fresh cold air from Canada, dropping the freeze line all the way down towards... Orlando, Lake Okeechobee, and just north of West Palm Beach. And Marathon, probably going to break their record for the date at 47. And our first installment of Big Rig Travels. This is a YouTuber who has graciously allowed us to use his footage. This is happening right now as I record this. You're looking at I-44 in Oklahoma, about 40 miles northeast of Tulsa, heading west. So you're looking to the west. And his footage has great coverage of the sky. I really like that. So we can see some of the cloud layers that are on the charts. That looks like some mid-level clouds, maybe up at about 10, 12,000 feet. Kind of a mix of altocumulus and altostratus. So we're getting some dynamic lift working on that area. And there you can see it, his location right there back in the cold air, and he's approaching the snow bands. So maybe by the time you tune this in, you might see him hitting some of that snow because he's heading down this way out along Interstate 40 and towards Phoenix. And there's those snow bands that he's coming up on. And if you want to see more, BigRigTravels.com, that's the place to start. Just go to the live broadcast and you can see exactly what we're seeing. And that will do it for our Wednesday edition of Forecast Lab. Thank you very much for joining and hopefully we'll see you back here on Friday with that update on the Nor'easter. Have a good one. Bye-bye.